Hey everybody, Ben DeHamers for Steel Target Paint Team. One of the things I wanted to get into simply because I have my stuff out from just doing a dry fire video was kind of a uh, addition to a video that I asked uh, Kyle Myers if he would make and, and he came through and <laughs> in great fashion. Uh, Kyle Myers put up a video on appendix carry. One of the discussions that I had on Facebook and I started was how do you carry and why? So one of the discussions that I want to start to have in a way I want to discuss things is number one from what Tyson Kilby and I talked about from the A-way point of view. And then the other thing that you heard his name said a lot, Larry Drake. Larry Drake is the guy that will make you think what you're doing and why you're doing it. So everything that I talk about, I wanna look at from a point of view of A-way, and then I wanna talk about why. And then what I wanna add personally to things is too many times we get into a particular technique or a particular piece of gear or even a particular firearm and we'll start to point out disadvantages of that and that's perfectly natural that's perfectly okay because we're talking about pretty serious things okay whether that be life and death where we're using a particular firearm or piece of gear to save our lives potentially or it's very serious because it's a competition world and we're very serious about winning and we don't want something that's not going to work or isn't going to is gonna take away from our skills that we've worked so hard to attain. So I wanna come at this from a point of view and I wanna talk about what disadvantages there are uh, in addition to all the advantages. Because like Tyson Kilby said, as soon as somebody comes up here and says, hey, you know, this is the best whatever it is, the human mind is just conditioned to start to attack that. What do you mean, what do you mean that's the best, you know? So, I wanna come at things from a way. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna show clear. So this is my P10C with the TLR7 on it. I'm experimenting with the flashlight stuff. That's new for me. Um, they've come a long way and they're smaller. Okay, that was one of the big thing proponents that I had of flashlights in the past. Um, there's training that goes along with these. There's a mindset and a way to use the flashlights. And I think I've got a couple people that are going to come in and talk about that because I am no expert in that field whatsoever. Okay, but this is clear. And again, I've got my dry fire dummy rounds that we're going to put in there. Okay. So we'll cluster that up. So I carry in the three to four o'clock position. So Kyle Myers made a extremely good video out there after some discussion that we had on Facebook and I, I was kind of pressing him for, you know, why you do what you do. Um, and we, we had to go back and forth because uh, my challenging can, uh, can sometimes uh, make people think that I'm questioning more than I'm challenging for more information. Um, and that's one of the reasons why I want to start doing what I'm doing right now is I want to change that discussion. If somebody says to you, hey, you, you carry three to four o'clock, you know, well, I have problems with this. You know, maybe it's seat belted in a car, you know, I, I can't get that out. Well, I want to think of solutions as a group, as people that have experience. I think we should be learning from each other. Okay, I'm not an expert on anything whatsoever. So if we can have a positive discussion on, you know, you say to me, hey, when I'm buckled in a car, that doesn't work for me, so I do this. So then I want to talk about a solution. Well, is there a solution to that? Well, it might be having another gun on the car that, that's closer to you. You know, that, that's just one solution, but that's just to make the point. So we've done the safety part, we've shown clear. Uh, the next thing I wanna talk about again is uh, Kyle Myers did an amazing job in that video. If you have not seen his appendix carry video, please go take a look at that. I think it's by far the best video that I've seen on the how, the why, the what of how to carry in any fashion for that matter, but in his particular case, it's appendix. So first thing that's important is retention. 
So he gave the examples of being able to just put an arm down, you know, over the top of that firearm or putting both hands on it, you know, holding the gun in its place if somebody's trying to get it from you. Well, there's not a whole lot of difference between here and here, okay? Because I'm going to try to keep this one in the holster the exact same way. This way, this way, you know, whatever it might be, I'm going to do retention the exact same way as if I was carrying appendix. So... One of the advantages that Kyle talked about was being skinny. Now, I'm more fluffy than, than Kyle is, and I'm working on that, and I hope to get down to about Kyle's size um, of being skinny. So appendix carry is better that way for those people. Tyson Kilby talked about that yesterday, of having that in the front, okay? So here's one of the things that, that I have uh, with appendix carry, one of the considerations, uh, two of them actually. One is what we talked about yesterday with uh, Tyson Kilby is that that, uh, that gun is pointed at a, at a femoral artery, which is the largest artery in the entire body of which you will bleed out for in a matter of a few seconds um, if, if it's even nicked, okay? Um, so that, that's the biggest concern for um, appendix carry. And it's more so for somebody that's fluffy. So Kyle talked about how uh, he thought even fluffy people would be able to uh, carry appendix. Now that's partially true, but there is a consideration that needs to be had is that what Tyson Kilby was talking about was his training was to have hips out. And then as he's coming out and going back reholstering, he's never even aiming at it because the gun is pointed towards the floor and not at his body. With a fluffy girth, as uh, Kyle called it, the problem is that when you start to carry appendix, it starts to cant that gun into you. So one of the things that I have found, even when I was much larger than what I am now, is that it would actually try to roll that gun over the top of the belt if it was a mid-size or smaller gun. Now, a full-size gun, you don't have that problem because it's going so far down. But then because it's going so far down, obviously you run into, you know, your your leg is hitting it and, and other things so appendix carry just wasn't working for me um so back to retention here's one of the things that i learned one of the one of the many great things that i learned in in the annual training that we do uh they had us pair up um one person was going to be the good guy one guy was going to be the bad guy so the purpose of the bad guy was to take the officer's gun so we had plastic guns and we had them in our duty holsters and when they said go, they attacked you. And we started from a standing position and obviously this wound up going down on the ground, rolling around, hitting walls across the ceiling if we could. Uh, but it was all over the place. Um, but there's one thing that everybody found, you know, we're all badasses in our own mind. We're all the tough guy. We're all the, we're trained, you know, we're, we're cops, you know, we've got this training and I'm, I'm fluent with guns and some of us know how to fight. Some of us have martial arts and this and that and the other, but guess what? Every single person lost their gun. Every person did. Let that sink in for just a minute. Every single person did. And I'll tell you why. And this is what we all learned. We all learned the same thing. Is that the attacker has a tremendous advantage over you. He can use his entire body, both hands, feet, head, his body weight, everything to get this gun. Now, it's almost like a process like I would call from the draw, the one, two, three, four draw. Okay, the first thing he's trying to do is demobilize you. OK, so if you're both standing, that's going to be pushing you against the wall, getting you down to the ground or just being physically strong enough to hold you in place or getting around behind you, bear hugging you, something like that, demobilizing you. OK, and then that's when the fight for the gun starts. Now, it's not going to be somebody's going to walk up like in Hollywood, grab your gun and pull it out of the holster and point it at you. That's not what's going to happen. Phase two is going to be they are going to be trying to snake their hand into getting some type of purchase on this gun, whether it be, you know, the back of the slide, the grip, whatever, might, maybe the whole holster. You know, we had one guy that undid the other guy's belt and ripped it off, you know? So, and no, he wasn't wearing, you know, belt keepers. And guess what? We, we learned from that, you know? So 
all they're trying to do is snake in and get some type of purchase on that. Now, obviously we're fighting them, but our disadvantage is that we're really having to keep that gun in place, even if it's ambidextrous. Okay, now the Kung Fu part of us would like to be, you know, okay, well, I'm gonna put this arm down here and then I'm gonna do my ninja stuff with this hand. Well, great, but everybody lost their gun, no matter what they tried to do. And it's because that aggressor has such an advantage over you. So retention is something that we must consider. How are we gonna deal with that, okay? So that's where some martial arts training is gonna come in. Um, one of the big things with that type of training is gonna be keeping you comfortable. If, if you get Tyson Kilby talking about um, jujitsu, one of the largest techniques that I know of when it comes to both ground fighting and standing and fighting is keeping yourself calm no matter what's happening, even if you're losing, even if you're in a bad spot, you know, somebody just got your gun, you have to be able to remain calm so that you can apply yourself to that without overloading yourself. So retention is gonna be a big deal. So how do we deal with retention? Now I'm gonna have some other people come in and they're gonna talk about these things on an expert level. But one of the things that I really wanted to talk about was just about almost everybody that I see okay they all have something in common okay they've got the their little pick stickers in their pocket okay so there's a few people that i thought were open to discussion and i passed on to them something that was passed on to me in the martial arts world okay so if i have this here and it's in my pocket or clipped to my pocket or whatever it might be okay so as Kyle would say, this is my primary weapon as I'm standing here, okay? This is what I want for lethal force. I'm not gonna go to a knife when I have a gun, okay? This is what I want. However, if I'm having to fight for this or fight someone off of this, it's likely my right hand that's gonna be doing a lot of the retention with my support hand supporting that, okay? So, to go for a knife, which is one of our options for getting someone off of us to get our gun coming up, slicing, getting them off of us, slicing their hands and getting them to leave our gun alone. Well, look at the position that I'm in now, even if it was appendix, okay? So what I've told people is if you're carrying a gun, put your pig sticker over here in a support position. Okay, that way, if I'm fighting for my gun, even if my gun happens to be out at the time and someone grabs a hold of it and I'm fighting for it, rather than trying to go to this pocket for something that's going to help get someone off of me, I want to go over here and now I can use this to try to cut them off of me. Okay, now, one of the reasons that you just saw the folders are a little bit awkward for that, okay? What I actually prefer is something along the lines of a straight blade. Now, the one I carry is a very cheap model. It's from CRT, I think it is. But it was made by, it was made by a expert knife maker. And I gotta tell you, this thing is razor sharp. So if I'm fighting for my gun over here, especially if it's out, I'm gonna be able to come off with my support hand and go to a blade that's gonna be able to help me separate from them, okay? If this is out, we're already a deadly force situation, okay? If they're fighting for this, if they're trying to take this away from you, okay? My training says that's a deadly force encounter. Okay, they're trying to take this away from me. And it's a reasonable assumption that they're going to use it on me if they get it away from me, or they're gonna use it on someone else. Okay, so this is also deadly force. Okay, so I haven't downgraded, but we are gonna say that this is probably a better one. Okay, so I want this to help me separate. So that's a part of the discussion on retention. Okay, how am I gonna, keep this gun? How am I going to keep someone else from getting it and someone using it on me? Okay. Another part of retention is concealability. 
Kyle made a great point on that, small back carry. It's great when you bend over, many times you can see that. Now the reality is, is a lot of people don't pay attention. Okay, a, a lot of people that are out there, you could walk around with a gun in your hand and they probably wouldn't notice it, okay? So, concealability. So, that gets us into a realm of open carry versus concealed carry that I don't wanna get into for this video, but I'm gonna say my way, A way, is concealed. I just think that you lose a lot of your tactical advantage by carrying open because everybody knows that you have it and you don't know which one of those people wants it. Okay, so I like mine concealed. That's my way, okay? So now we can get into the advantages of where it's at versus anything else. So what I feel the advantage for having it over here is number one, number one is that this is where I'm used to going, okay? This is where my competition rig is. This is where my carry optic gun is when I'm shooting competition which is what I do more of than anything else, is shoot competition, okay? That's where I actually pull a gun out of a holster more than anywhere else, okay? When I'm on duty and I have a gun, that's where it is. It's in this position, okay? It's not here. So I'm not used to it being here. So one of the things that I learned even in the competitive world back when I shot open was a lot of the guys carry a magazine kind of at a 45 degree angle right in front. And it's so fast from a reload to go to that and get back in, into uh, uh, back on the timer. So I tried that, but guess what happened? Is that no matter how much I dry fired with that, oh yeah, man, this, this is fast, fast. I'm doing fast with that, great and dry fire. But then when I get out and I'm on the clock and things change, your mindset has changed, I was going over here where I'm used to my magazines being. And I was completely forgetting about this one more than 50% of the time. I would finish a stage and I'd have my magazine sitting right there in front of me, okay? It was because of what I was used to doing, okay? So for me personally, the A way that I'm gonna talk about is going here simply because I'm used to it, not because it's better than ambidextrous carry or small of the back carry or you know ankle carry or under my hat carry, whatever it might be, this is for me. Okay, because that's where I'm used to it being. Okay, so a couple other differences, and we're gonna call them differences. I'm not even gonna call them advantages or disadvantages. So a Penix carry, uh, Kyle made a, a very good point about comfortability and ease of getting to it. Um, over here, yes, there is a little bit more of a motion, um, and Kyle is very trained in getting in here, getting that ambidextrous out, but this isn't that much different. Okay, my draw technique from here, you know, from, from a ready, non-ready type position is just here, okay? So one of the things that I kind of said is that it's speed is a lot of times not gonna be the number one thing you're after. And if it is, you're already in a lot of trouble, okay? But the other part is, is that Ben Stoger point, made a very, 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 very good point in, in one of his podcasts about reloading. And as soon as he said this, and as soon as it hit me as hard as it did, uh, I started applying it to everything I do. So he made a discussion about doing reloads. So he said for years, what we've done is we've stood here, we go to our mag pouch and we reload and we see how fast we can do it. And then he made the point, well, in competition, how many times are we doing a standing reload? As a matter of fact, we never want to be doing a standing reload unless we're doing a qualifier that tells us that we have to. So his point was move, okay? So now when I practice reloads, and that'll be a whole nother thing, is that if I'm standing here and I've got the gun out and I want to reload, I take a step, at least one step. And then when I do it again, I take a, for, a forward step, and then another step, and then a backward step. So guess what I do when I start messing with my holster? I start doing the same thing. Okay, so speed, we're not looking for a gunfight at noon in the city street, see who can draw faster. Okay, we're gonna be in a bad situation. We're not gonna be standing here like perfectly ready and knowing that something bad's gonna happen in three, two, one, draw. Okay, it's not gonna work that way. 
okay? So you gotta look at what you're doing and why, okay? So I don't find a whole lot of difference for me, with both because of what I said about being fluffy and being used to where I'm going because it's gonna slow me down just as much if it under stress, I go here, oh, it's not there, I gotta go here now. Okay, I'm gonna mess that up and that's gonna be just as slow as the difference is gonna to be to go to this side of my body, okay? Now, disadvantage, especially being fluffy again, is that ambidextrous carry, you can get to that gun, and I'm so surprised that Kyle didn't put this in his video, you can get to that gun with either hand, okay? I'm gonna be hard pressed to get over here and get this gun out with my support hand. Okay, but you just saw I can. It's not gonna be fast, but I can, okay? So, the other thing that I like. So, if I'm in a physical confrontation where a lot of things start, you know, we're always wanting to distance, whether it's an on-duty situation or whether you are uh, just uh, being a civilian out at Price Chopper or Walmart. You know, if there's some type of conflict, you want to be distancing yourself from that. If it's way over there, two aisles over, I either want to leave or I want to get 10 aisles over, okay? that That's what we should, that should be our mindset, okay? Now, if there's a situation where we have to involve ourselves, that's another discussion. But for personal safety, for self-defense, you want distance from any type of conflict. So that's why I like this is because if I'm closed on by an adversary, simply by blading my body, I have put that gun completely away from, on the other side of me, away from them, making it far more difficult for them to get to. So for them to get to this gun, they have to come around this way or around that way or be able to turn me, okay? So, and any martial arts is gonna teach you, you're gonna blade your body anyway, right? So I like to put this away from any type of adversary, okay? And then I can even use my hand, my elbow, or even my head to keep them away from me while I get this out, okay? So you can do the same thing with appendix, right? There's a change though. With appendix carry, even when you blade, and it's still right here, it is closer to them. You haven't taken it as far away as possible. Fine, but if we're close, if I go to go for a gun here, it's very simple for that person that I may be in close proximity with because I'm backed up against a wall or I simply can't move, that all he has to do is retain the gun the exact same way I would try to retain the gun. Now I'm the one trying to get the gun out and he's the one trying to keep me from doing it. Maybe he has an edge weapon in, in the other hand. All he has to do is reach out and put his hand on top of my hand or the gun and hold it down and I can't get it out. Now, yes, it'd be the same thing over here, but I feel like I'm able to blade that away from them to where they don't have that same type of leverage where if I can't move back and create distance, they can retain that gun and then they can do all kinds of stabby stabby stuff, okay? So that's just something to consider. It's not a reason not to carry ambidextrous because it is the same for both types of things, but it is one of the things that I consider because one of the things I have done with friends is we've put the gun in different positions. And that was the one thing that I found I could do to somebody else is we would get in a situation where they were close to a wall or something like that. And we'd say, go. And the first thing I would do is I would come out and I would retain their gun. And then I would either go for a knife or guess what? I'd go for a gun. Now I'm holding their gun in place and I've got mine out. And it came from a position that while I'm fighting them, I can keep them away. So if it's ambidextrous and I'm fighting with them, trying to keep their gun in containment in the holster and mine's right here he can do the same to me so i like it back here because once i get that established on him and then i can retain it the same way we already talked about then i can go for my gun which is back here and then the other thing that we're going to talk about is it's slower it, it's shorter movement okay and kyle made this point to go to here and come out with a gun versus it's a little bit of a longer movement to go here. Sure it is. But one of the things that um, 
And I'm gonna call this a little bit of a high level training because this takes some comfortability. I remember the first time that I did this, um, we trained with it one year in firearms training. And then I kind of took it to another level with some, uh, uh, honestly, with some good uh, technique that I got off the internet. Uh, and I went out and took to my own workshop and tried out. And that is what they call, uh, I think some people call um, the PEC type hold. Okay, so what they're doing is this is extreme close quarters where I'm either holding someone back or I'm using an elbow to create distance and I'm shooting from here. So ambidextrous, you're coming out here and then coming up here. Great, okay, it's just a movement. But the thing is, if that person is on you, you have to wiggle in in between them. So from back here, I'm coming up to a natural position. I don't even have to come to this position, just straight out of the holster, okay? That's part of the, that's part of the draw, okay? The, the modern law enforcement draw actually came from what was considered a uh, close quarters combat type draw, okay? Where you're pulling this out and you're bringing it here and then meeting. Well, I can fire from here, okay? I can fire all the way out to presentation, anywhere. Ambidextrous carry, I have to come up and then I have to get that gun turned. Now, it could be that I go back this way, and that's perfectly fine. However, one of the things with ambidextrous is that it's a straight up and down cant, okay? So you're going to have to break the top of the holster mostly before you can start to angle this gun. And even then, it's pointed that direction. You're going to have to get it to this or to this, where when I come out, I'm right there. So I think the last thing that I want to go over is along those same lines is ground fighting. Okay. You wind up down on the ground and Kyle made a good point about this is if you're in a physical altercation with somebody, he feels like having it here, he can get to it better in a physical altercation. I think sometimes that's going to be true. I think more times it's going to be more challenging than he might think. And I encourage everyone to put some shorts and a t-shirt on, put a gi on, whatever it is that you have, find a like-minded friend and go out and get on a mat. If you can't get on the mat, get out and get on the grass, okay? And take those things to the workshop. If you think that during a, a physical altercation, you're gonna be able to get to it better here, well then go try that out. Uh, I think in some circumstances that's gonna be correct. Personally, my way, I think this gives me more options, okay? On the ground, number one, again, retention. One of the, now I did, remember I said everybody lost their gun, but one of the things all of us found that when we went to the ground was very advantageous for us, was, especially somebody more fluffy, was to, on the ground, just roll on top of that gun and put everything I've got on top of that gun. Now that doesn't mean somebody can't slither in and take it, okay? But it made it much harder, okay? So that's why I like it there even for on the ground, okay? So in appendix carry, you're gonna have to roll over on your belly and you're giving them your back, okay? You're kind of giving them your back going this way, but they seem focused on this, okay? If they're focused on this, and that's another discussion from a martial arts standpoint that I learned, is that when they're focused on a weapon, um, they're not focused on some other things and you need to be able to take advantage of that, okay? So, with all that said, on the ground, the Gracies are doing some amazing things with ground fighting with firearms. And I think that's the next thing that me and Tyson are going to work on. But the same uh, application is true, okay? If I'm dealing with somebody, I go down on the ground, I can try to blade away from them you know, whether that be just rolling on my side or even shrimping away from them, I'm able to get to this gun, okay? I always feel like in this position, I'm able to put this gun away from a potential adversary, even when I'm on the ground, okay? And then the other part is, is if they are on top of me, there's several jujitsu techniques and there's several just ground fighting techniques where 
Uh, and I'm not really good with all the, the names of them in the jujitsu world. I was shown a lot of them without names. This is technique number five, okay? Uh, but one of the best ones is when you get somebody down on top of you, and, and we're gonna go over this with Tyson, but when you get somebody down on top of you, the idea is to not distance yourself from them, but bring them into you and hold them to you so that their range of motion is lost. Whether that means they wanna punch on you, stab at you, whatever it might be. And then one of the things you can do is you can either get into uh, a Kimura type or what we used to call the clamp type arm lock, or you can just pass them a little bit to your side and come up and over where your arm is across their back. So now you've got them a little bit diagonal and that lets you get to this gun but they might be laying right there on that appendix carry. So once you fight them into that position, now you might have to fight to get underneath and then come out with it versus this is wide open to me. So that is a particular technique that feeds to this being here. So there's nothing wrong with appendix carry. I support appendix carry. What I'm presenting is a way, three to four o'clock carry and considerations. That's what I want to talk about. That's what I want everybody to talk about. That's what I want people to tell me. Hey, have you considered this? And if it's something that I haven't considered, then you can bet I'm going to take it out to the workshop or I'm going to go, hey, you know, Billy Bob Joe on Facebook or, or forum or YouTube said, hey, you know, with your three or four o'clock carry, have you considered this? Oh, no, I haven't. I haven't thought of that. I need to go out and look at it. Okay, uh, and one thing comes to mind is um, being buckled into a seatbelt or um, being seated in a chair. Seated in a chair is a little bit different, but uh, being buckled into a car, again, most likely my fight is gonna come from uh, my window. I would certainly hope it would not be with somebody who's already in my car. However, that is a situation for you know undercover people or or just anybody for that matter. But if you know if, if you're running with with you know that that type of people that you have in your car, then there might be some other things that we need to question. Uh, but likely it's going to come from my driver window. Okay, and again, this is as far away from them as I can get it. Okay, and I I don't have an issue. Um, even being fluffy, I don't have an issue, you know, leaning over this way or leaning back. You know, I, I can basically bridge, you know, like a like a wrestling or, or a jujitsu bridge, uh, only using my shoulders against the, the seat instead of my head and bridge my body if I need that type of access to the gun. So the point is, guys, I really want us to change the conversation. Um, cops, uh, martial arts people, um, gun counter guys, uh, all of us just on forums, Facebook, everywhere where we can talk to each other. We are conditioned somehow. And I think it has to do with security in the techniques that we're going to use to save our lives or win a competition. We are conditioned to question anything that is not our own. So if somebody comes out and says, hey, ambidextrous carry when I do this, you know, the conditioning is to come out and say, no, that's wrong because of this, that, and the other. Well, there's solutions to this, that, and the other. That's what I hope that us as smart people, because we are all smart people, okay? We really are, and we need to respect each other more. I'm learning that, okay? We have to respect each other more. Everybody's a smart person. Everybody has something to offer. One of the things that Tyson Kilby was talking about yesterday was how jiu-jitsu does that. And a story that he told me that he'd wound up not sharing, and I think he forgot, is that one of the things that Royce Gracie does when he wants to go back to basics is he'll go get one of his white belts and he'll say, hey, teach me this technique. And it's a going back to basics type thing. And it's a everything has something to provide. Everybody's a smart person. Everybody has a perspective. People have perspectives that you may not have thought of. Okay? And once your ego starts saying that you are full and you have everything you need, it, it's those creases and it's those gaps and it's that overconfidence uh, that's either going to lose you the day on a competition field or it's going to get you or somebody else hurt uh, that you may care very much about um, in a self-defense type world. So if we could back off of each other, take a step back and try to recondition our conversations to say, hey, you know, that is that doesn't work rather than let's say 
hey, this is a consideration I have. Can you explain to me how you worked through it? And that person may very well say, I didn't think of that. I need to go look at it. So I really hope that that's what I can start to generate because that's my purpose. And then I'm also going to be promoting um, sponsors and everything like that. Again, this is kind of a secondary intro video for the content that I'm wanting to go into. This one's going to be about 35, 36 minutes long. Um, I'm hoping to get all of them down to about you know 10 or less. And then we're also talking about doing a, a podcast, uh, as was suggested to me, so that people can learn, uh, can listen to it while they're either driving or working or you know whatever it might be. Guys, thank you very much. I hope we can get all, we can all get on board with changing our techniques, changing how the way we think and the way that we discuss with each other. I really, really appreciate all the support. Thank you.